Hey everybody. Today we're doing some problems computing probabilities using the central limit theorem. We're going to do two problems. Here's the first. The weights of bags of a certain brand of candy are normally distributed with mean 45 grams and standard deviation 1.5 grams. Find the probability that a randomly selected bag contains less than 44 grams of candy. Then find the probability that five randomly selected bags contain an average of less than 44 grams, and then that 25 randomly selected bags do. By the way, in this video, I'm being pretty loose with the word weight versus mass. Please let's all just agree to get over it. So part A is just a normal distribution question. It's only one bag taken from a normal distribution. We're looking at the normal distribution with mean 45 and variance 1.5 squared. And so we're going to do the calculation just using a normal CDF. We're going to get the z-score for um, a bag that has 40, a weight of 44 grams. And that z-score is going to be 44 minus mu over sigma. Here, of course, mu is 45 and sigma is 1.5 for a z-score of negative 0.67. We want to get the probability of finding a z-score at random less than negative 0.67. That'll be the same as the probability of getting x value less than 44 in the original distribution. There are many ways of calculating this normal CDF. You can use a table or a TI calculator or a web app, for example. I use R, I recommend R, where the command is p-norm of negative 0.67, the p-norm of the z-score. In this case, we get 0.252 approximately. So there's about a 25% chance that a particular bag is underfilled by more than a gram. By the way, if you're an R user, you could also have evaluated this probability using the command p-norm of 44, 45, 1.5. So the x value, the mean, and the standard deviation are the three arguments there. Part B. Find the probability that five randomly selected bags contain an average of less than 44 grams of candy. Okay, so this is a question that asks a probability for a sample mean, and so we need to address it using the central limit theorem, which goes like this. Suppose a simple random sample of size n is drawn from a population with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. If n is large and usually 30 is sufficient, then the sampling distribution of the sample mean x bar is approximately normal with mean mu and standard deviation sigma over the square root of n. So roughly speaking, x bar has the same center but less spread than the population. Moreover, if the population distribution is normal, then the sampling distribution of x bar is exactly normal, regardless of the sample size n. So in this case, we're drawing from a normal distribution. So that approximation from the central limit theorem is going to be exact. X bar is itself going to be exactly normal. The mean is going to be the same as the population mean, 45. And the standard deviation is going to be scaled down by a factor of 1 over the square root of n. So the variance is going to be 1.5 squared over 5. The standard deviation will be 1.5 over the square root of 5. Now we need to compute the probability that x bar is less than 44. We're going to do that the same way as we did on the previous, um, for the previous part, by computing a z-score and using a normal CDF. We need to do phi of 44 minus mu over sigma divided by the square root of n. Here, the standard deviation of x bar is sigma over the square root of n, not just sigma. Plugging in values and simplifying, we get phi of negative 1.49. So we're doing p-norm again of negative 1.49. It's 0.068. In words, the probability that five bags of candy have a mean weight less than 44 grams is less than 7%. Part C. Find the probability that 25 randomly selected bags contain an average of less than 44 grams of candy. So this is exactly the same as part B, except that now we have a larger sample size. So we're going to basically just copy and paste the first line from the last slide um, and re replace the number 5 with 25. Here, phi of 44 minus 45 over 1.5 divided by the square root of 25. Overall, we're doing phi of negative 3.33, or p-norm of negative 3.33. In this case, we get 0.0004. 
So there's only about a four one hundredths of a percent chance um, that 25 bags will have an average this low. Not very large. One thing that we can take away from the um, parts A, B, and C of this problem. While the fill of an individual bag can be rather variable, the average fill over many bags is very predictable. Problem two. Accidents along a dangerous stretch of highway occur at a mean rate of two per day, with a standard deviation of 1.4 per day. The full probability distribution is given by this probability histogram. What's the approximate probability that more than 10 accidents occur in a week? That more than 20 do? Now, we are given a full description of the probability distribution here. And so, technically, we could compute this probability exactly. It would be a lot of work, however. We're going to want to use the central limit theorem. Now, since the distribution itself is not normal, the central limit theorem is only going to give us an approximation. And we're going to be okay with that. The other complicating factor is that this is a question about the probability for the total number of accidents in a week, rather than a sample mean over a certain number of days. But we can translate back and forth between those two questions using this fact. n accidents per week is the same as having n divided by 7 accidents per day on average. So to get the probability that we have more than 10 accidents in a week, we're going to actually compute the probability that x bar is greater than 10 divided by 7 for a sample size of 7. And to get the probability that the total number of accidents in a week is more than 20, we're going to get the probability that the average number of accidents per day is greater than 20 sevenths. Um, in each case, we're going to rely on the central limit theorem that with a sample size of 7, x bar is approximately normal with mean 2, and variance 1.4 squared divided by 7. So standard deviation 1.4 over the square root of 7. Now we're going to do this calculation almost exactly the same as we did the previous calculations. And there's just one wrinkle. Here we're looking for a probability that x bar is greater than a number, not less. So we have to use the complementary idea. We're going to do the probability that x bar is greater than 10 sevenths by doing 1 minus the probability that it's less than or equal to 10 sevenths. Because x bar greater than 10 sevenths and x bar less than or equal to 10 sevenths are complementary events. And this second one is just um, something we can do with the normal CDF. Once again, we're going to get a z-score. We take the value that we've got, 10 sevenths, subtract the mean of x bar, which is 2, divide by the standard deviation of x bar, which is 1.4 divided by the square root of 7, simplify, and that z-score is negative 1.08. Overall, we're doing 1 minus p norm of negative 1.08, so about 0.860. Roughly speaking, there's an 86% chance that there will be at least 10 accidents in a week along this stretch of highway. Or I should say more than 10 accidents per week along that stretch of highway. The second part of this question asks us to do the same calculation for um, 20 accidents in a week. Probability that x bar is greater than 20 sevenths is 1 minus the probability that x bar is less than or equal to 20 sevenths. So 1 minus phi of 20 sevenths minus 2 over 1.4 divided by the square root of 7. 1 minus phi of 1.62. In this case, we get 0.053. So the probability of more than 10 accidents in a week is about 86%, while the probability of more than 20 is only about 5.3%. So major difference between those two. If you've been watching and listening carefully, you may have noticed a problem with all of this. And I encourage you, if you haven't, to pause and go back and look and try and find it. So the central limit theorem says specifically that x bar is approximately normal when n is large and that 30 is usually enough. But in this case, the sample size, n, was only 7. So technically, it seems like we shouldn't be using the central limit theorem at all. However, while the CLT, as I've written it, doesn't apply for small sample sizes, it actually usually performs very well, unless the, unless the variable that you're sampling from is very skewed or has major outlier values. 
So um, to illustrate the fact that the CLT performs pretty well, I went back and I computed the probabilities that X bar was greater than, t or rather that um, X, the total um, number of accidents per week was greater than 10 and greater than 20. I computed those exactly using the original probability histogram that I showed you a little bit ago. When I did that, I got that the probability that the total number of accidents in a week was greater than 10 was 0.824. That is the probability that X bar is greater than 10 sevenths. Compare that with the central limit theorem approximation of 0.860. Not too bad. Similarly, the probability of getting more than 20 accidents in a week, the probability that X bar is greater than 20 sevenths, is actually 0.048 as opposed to the CLT approximation of 0.053. I think both of these are amazingly close given that the sample size was only 7 and our distribution actually showed a fair amount of skew.